Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the tenth day of Elul, and today we are completing letter twelve in the Egeres Hakodesh. And um, as we mentioned, this letter is another fundraising letter the Alter Rebbe sends, talking about the mitzvah of tzedakah. You know, you get all the time the barbarned with uh, emails. Donate to here, donate to there. Everyone comes with a different incentives, win a Tesla, win a vacation. And um, the Alter Rebbe style of writing fundraising, fundraising letters is a little different. He's telling you the deeper secrets of what Tzedakah really does, revealing the deepest mystical accomplishment that is done through Tzedakah. So in this letter, it began with explaining the verse that it says in Yeshaya, Vehaya, Maise, Tzedakah, Shalom. The acts of Tzedakah will bring peace. Vehavoyda Tzedakah, Ashkeit, Vavetach, Ad Oilam. And the work of Tzedakah, the service of Tzedakah, is, will bring peace, will be quietness and surety forever. And um, so we explained, we started explaining yesterday the difference between what is the act of tzedakah and what is the work of tzedakah. That the act of tzedakah is doing tzedakah, giving charity, being charitable, being compassionate in a way that is part of our nature because that's what Hashem made us, the neshama, especially the godly soul, is rooted in the chesed of Hashem, the kindness of Hashem. And therefore, the fact that we are acting charitable is great, is nice, is beautiful, but it's not really going so much out of who we are. This is really who we are. You don't have to really transform something in order to do that. Yet, Says the Alter Rebbe, regardless, the reward for the acts of tzedakah is shalom, is peace. And we explained what is peace, peace above in heaven between the angels, those who, those angels of the right and those angels of the left that represent the, the giving, the, and the angels that represent the gevura, the restrictions. What makes peace between the angels? is the fact that something above the roots, the source is revealed to them. So when you act charitable, it makes peace apart in heaven. That means it brings a greater revelation of godliness, which in turn also brings down, makes peace down here. So in heaven, to make peace is not so difficult because after all, both, all kinds of angels and all kinds of uh, attributes serve a common goal to serve the purpose of Hashem. But here in this world, we have forces of good and forces of evil. How it came about, it's a whole different story, not for today. But the fact is that we need to eliminate the evil. And that too is done through the acts of tzedakah. Because when you have a greater light, an intense light that comes from above, as a result of the tzedakah that you give. This also has the effect of refining. He said this is like a, refine, a refinery, a refining the good from the evil. So this is true when you do the regular tzedakah. Then there is the avoidas of tzedakah, the work of tzedakah. The work of tzedakah is when you do tzedakah you do charity in a way that you really have to change, to break yourself. Going way beyond of what you would naturally do. And that is true in doing tzedakah. It is true in acting kind to, kind to other people in a way that, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. The person is so nasty to me, but still acting good. In a way, the way you, you study Torah not just turning Torah as much as you're comfortable with, but you 
really put your effort and you invest. And the same thing is when you pray, you and you pray, you put the investment in the prayer. You change your nature, you break yourself, and you refine yourself. What happens then? The Alta Rebbe says, the Avodas and Tzedakah, you are able to bring the evil down, not only to bring it down, but also to keep him down, to keep the evil down, to keep it separated, that it doesn't raise his ugly head after you finish prayer. Because sometimes when you get excited, when you're in a, in a state of, of a spiritual inspiration, that inspiration can, can be last for as long as it lasts. You're coming to the shul, you, uh, you have a, a Yom Kippur, or you're coming, you're, having a, you're listening to a very inspiring class, or whatever it is, you're inspired, but the inspiration doesn't last long. If you want the inspiration to last long, if you want the evil to really be separated and keep it down, is when you do your prayer with the in, with the introducing also as a preparation for the prayer will be with the tzedakah that you give. You go beyond of what you normally would do, and the same thing with all the mitzvahs. When you do something in a way that you break yourself. That separates the power of the evil and brings it down. And as long as you don't wake him up, then it's going to stay down. And we're going to see what that means. So let's see inside the way the Alter Rebbe says it. Says the Alter Rebbe, This then is the meaning of the verse, and the act of, the, of charity shall be Peace, as we said before, you have the act of their charity brings peace, and the avoid of tzedakah, the work of tzedakah, brings quiet and surety. So he says, Shegam at tzedakah anikas b'shem ma'ise v'loi b'shem avoideh, that even with the kind of charity which is called the act, and not service, not the work of the toiling of tzedakah, but just the plain act of tzedakah. Nevertheless, even the act of tzedakah can also accomplish great things. As he says, This arousal from below will nevertheless elicit an arousal from above. What is it? One arouses a manifestation of the infinite ain't safe light with a great illumination and an intense diffusion. Venasa Sholem Bimraimov and peace is brought about in God's high place, God's high places, between Mike Michael, Angel Michael and Gabriel, Chesed and Gavura, as we explained in the last few lessons. And also within the terrestrial retinue, the lower worlds. Here also it brings peace. But over here, the peace to bring between in this world means that we have to get rid of the evil, and that's not so easy. In this lowly world, however, there will be no manifestation of this peace and of the refinement and separation of the evil from the good until the ultimate time when evil will cease to exist. That will be in the time of Mashiach. But not during the time of exile, as explained above. Except, as we said yesterday, Except in the microcosm, meaning in man, you can find this kind of peace temporarily, sometimes during certain special auspicious times, whether it's prayer, whether there are other types of inspiration. When you, when you experience the peace, when you experience the existence of Hashem and all the other material things don't, make, don't matter so much. It says, Behold, every time of finding 
meaning during prayer. As it is written through tzedek, through charity, I will behold your countenance, as discussed above. However, this inspiration doesn't last long, because after davening, the evil raises its ugly head once again. That's what it says. Even so, after prayer, it is possible that the evil will easily reawaken and become intermingled with the good. Because in this world, everything is mixed good and bad. As one walks about in the darkness of this world, so that's, that is why you need a deeper, a stronger f- effect, and that is the work of the work of tzedakah. When you have the work of tzedakah, that kind of tzedakah that is not easy to achieve, that you go way beyond your limitations, you break yourself, this enables to put down the other side, the evil side, the Yetzahara down in a more permanent way. However, as to the charity which is practiced with self-imposed toil at the level of Avaida service, working, since it is exceedingly precious and lofty, far more than the tzedakah, one practices out of one's natural inclination. Because in the former case, one overrules his nature and bodily will out of deference to the supreme will. Viskafia Sitra Achra. He says in the former case, but in my humble opinion, maybe I'm wrong. But it seems like you're talking about this the second case, the latter case. That the latter case of Tzedakah, in a way of Aveda, when you're changing your nature and your will, you're breaking it. Into, into the will because of the will of Hashem, the supreme will. Viskafia sitra achra, and the sitra achra is subjugated. Vazai istalek yekoro the kucha brichu chulo, and then the glory of the Holy One, blessed be He, rises and becomes manifest in all the worlds. Okay, Yisrael na oyer min achoyshech dafke kanoida. And like the superiority of light over darkness and out of the darkness as it's known. And therefore, says Dalte Rebbe, because you're subjugating to such an extent by breaking the nature, it says, oid bekalos kolkach me'elov. says, in such a case, by virtue of exertion involved in this superior form of tzedakah, the evil can no longer reawaken so easily of itself. And that is something you have to uh, keep in mind. He's talking about you cannot, the evil cannot reawaken on its own. However, unless, heaven forfend, God forbid, one rouses and rouses it and draws it up upon himself. What is he saying? He's saying with such a work of, of the breaking yourself and giving the tzedakah, and breaking yourself and doing the prayer, and, the, and the, you're doing it in such a way, when you change, when you give away yourself, then the evil is subdued. And it's not going to reawaken by its uh, on its own, 
unless a person reawakens it in himself. What does it mean? You have to be, as long as you keep, keep it in, intact. You know, they say by, um, they say al khait they say the confession on Yom Kippur, one of the confessions we say is al khait shechatanu lefanecha b'yetzer ara. We ask Hashem to forgive us for the sins, the sin that we have sinned with you with an evil inclination. And the Rebbe speaks about this and he asks, what does it mean? Isn't all sins that we do, we do it with our evil inclination? And the Rebbe says that there's some times that a person doesn't even have an active evil inclination. Wake up in the morning, the Yetzirah still, still didn't wake up. But sometimes we bring it upon ourselves. We open up our phones and we start looking at things, we start asking for things, for, for temp- temptations that the Yetzirah himself did not intend to come to us. We, you're busy with you doing your thing and and going out and looking and searching and getting getting yourself and drawing the yetzer upon yourself that's called the hate the sin that we sin with the yetzer so that's what he's saying sometimes you you're when you do the avaida when you do the tzedakah and you do the prayer with the extra effort that you put in you're able to bring the yetzer down and as long as you don't wake up that sleeping monster, you're going to be able to continue to do what you need to do in the right way. So this is how you put the Yetzirah down and you keep him down by not waking him up. Continues the Alter Rebbe. This then is the meaning of the of quietness and surety forever. Now the reward for the service of charity, the work of charity, is eternal quietness and surety. Something that you're going to take him down and you and you keep him down. And it says the word hashkate, which means quietness. Hashkate to meloshen shaykate al shamarav. The word hashkate is related to the root in the verb in the phrase that he rests on his dregs now the dregs of the wine you rest on his dregs what does that mean meaning that the dregs are completely separated from the wine and sink all the way down as long as you don't as you don't uh, rock the boat as they say it keeps the dregs down, the dregs of the wine keeps it down, and you have clear wine on top. While the wine above is wholly pure and clear. And what is the and this metaphor is for keeping the evil down. And you keep yourself clear. Similarly, it is with the service of charity, with the work of charity, the dregs represent the admixture of evil in one's soul. And that evil that is mixed in the soul is separated. Which is gradually extricated and separated until it falls netherward, falls all the way down to its roots and sores below the world. And as we say, it says in the verse, as it is written, and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. This is the verse that we also say it through by the Tashlich, when we go to the prayer of Tashlich. And Rosh Hashanah, we go to the water, the body of water, and we ask Hashem to cast our sins to the bottom of the sea. And 
So this is the end of this letter. Alter Rebbe gives us the way, the real good incentive of giving tzedakah by revealing the secrets of what really tzedakah does. And uh, the casting of the sins all the way down. Once mentioned, why doesn't why don't we say, sometimes it mentions uh, that says, Ruach atuma avir menor, it's that spirit of, of the impurity will be completely eliminated. He would say, Tashlech b'metzulis yam kol chatezim. The sin is cast down to the bottom of the ocean. Because why don't we get rid of it altogether? And the answer is because really, ultimately, even the sins are something that ultimately can be transformed into goodness, into zdoinis nasukizachis. The sins can be turned into positive. When the forces of the sin turn a person to do tshuva in such a powerful way, the sins is considered like mitzvahs. But the first step is to cast it down, to bring it down, because you gotta, that's the first step. You've got to separate from them. You've got to have a pure heart to serve Hashem properly. Ultimately, you get to the next level to be able to transform also that it should be a complete purification of the entire world. So this is the end of today's shir. And uh, don't forget to say the extra chapters of Tehillim. And today we say chapter 28, 29, and 30 in Tehillim. And we'll see you tomorrow, Bezrat Hashem.